again. My name is Desiree Gennaro. Um, I work for SAIC. I'm a defense contractor. I work for OSD CAPE. And um, my presentation today is going to give you a little bit of a brief overview of a uh, prototype project we've been working on. Uh, one of the biggest things that um, we do within uh, Joint Data Support, which is my directorate, um, we do a lot of things with data discovery, product analysis, and we adjudicate different study documents. Um, my team, the collaboration team, we help facilitate the processes that go behind doing this. We make it collaborative so all of these people don't have to fly in from all over the country, take time out to conduct these really long workshops. They can just do it from their, from their work computer at their home location. Okay, so some of the ways that we use um, Semantic Media Wiki and the you know, bundle of extensions is we get data in, we search data, and we get data out. So and this is just a kind of a brief overview of the way with that we use the different semantic extensions, forms, forms input to get data in, internal objects, external data, data transfer, and searching the data. We use the run query function as well as uh, compound queries and semantic drill down, and to get it out we use Specifically, a lot of the time, the CSV export for uh, semantic results formats, as well as maps and other things like that. Why we use these extensions is kind of to decentralize uh, a lot of complex data. It also gives us uh, maximum return on investment when we don't have to have a lot of heavy infrastructure. Um, and we also increase visibility, transparency, participation, collaboration, and we eliminate a lot of duplication. Duplication of effort is a huge problem within the DOD and as well as the other parts of the federal government. <coughs> so now I'm going to start giving you um, a little bit of background of the different pieces of uh, our prototype. The DAC, it's the Defense Analysis Community. It was established in 2008. And uh, this is kind of our open collaboration portal within the DOD. Uh, we try and push it as much as possible, but our main content areas right now are Homeland Defense, Irregular Warfare, or uh, Current Operations, <laughs> and um, a Modeling and Simulation Tool Registry, and TIDAP. And I'll go more into what TIDAP is uh, right now. TIDAP stands for the Terrorism and Ir in Insurgency Data Aggregation Project. It's an Irregular Warfare or Current Operations uh, initiative. It's a uh, project space in the DAC. Um, it has three components, developmental, functional, and, exper and uh, experimental. Uh, we wanted to do a collaborative cataloging system, and the functional portion is it kind of provides uh, a tool for analyzing terrorism-specific um, data and insurgency problems. And the biggest portion was they wanted to find out what is the best level of data that people were looking for. Was it at the project uh, level, which is a, a you know, group of people collecting a bunch of <coughs> data and collecting them in different data sources? Or was it one level below that in the data source level? Or was it even down to the variable level? So this was a very, very detailed data collection project. They went in, uh, even down to the variable level to say, how many variables are in this database? What kind of variable is it? What are the allows values, if there are any allows values? So it was very, very, very detailed. Now, the second part of this project is another data collection effort called Data Cards. It was established in December 2010 in response to a uh, NATO project that was assigned to uh, National Defense University. Um, it basically just collects data about data. So it's a metadata collection repository. The original scope was uh, DOD's collected data from within Afghanistan because they were worried that all of this data was just going to disappear, nowhere to be found ever again. So instead of allowing that to happen, they wanted to create a, spa a space where we could collect that data and data about that data, so just a repository. And eventually the scope of that got expanded to worldwide coverage. We wanted to collect any meta metadata about any data source out there anywhere. DOD, non-DOD, educational, anything. Uh, some of the fields that we collect are pretty standard, you know, the classification of the data source, description, and if there's any access limitations, like if it's proprietary, secret, 
uh, the language that the data source is in, like English, German, Dari, Farsi. Uh, the geographic coverage, temporal coverage, and subject coverage, intended use, and intended customer. So you can see some of these uh, metadata fields are a little bit more useful than others. Like the intended use may not always be the best use of that data source. Okay, so this is where the two pieces of those puzzle of the of the puzzle come together. We kind of took the TIDAP project and the data cards project and we wanted to make an enterprise solution. We wanted to be able to browse a bunch of different locally hosted or externally hosted metadata repositories within the DOD, outside DOD, and we wanted to be able to pull them into a centrally located user interface. So SAIC specifically on our contract got assigned a special task order and to fill two positions, a knowledge manager and another web developer. Um, the knowledge manager's main job was to establish an ontology for this new enterprise solution as well as the subject taxonomy. This is one of the biggest ways that um, we try and search data is by its subject, its aboutness. And the web developer to basically develop this user interface. So this was the workflow that we have designed. It's kind of a more of a graphical <coughs> image on the right and uh, kind of explanation on the left. Explains how the user logs into the enterprise data cards wiki, uh, makes a search, and it pulls its results from both data cards and TIDAP. You can read, it would be uh, locally hosted within data cards, but when you edit, it takes you to the source. So we're not exactly pulling in all the data, we're just displaying it from its, from its external source. And then when you go to edit it, it takes you back to the source and you save it. And it's actually refreshed in real time in the results within the data card site. And this is just a uh, that same graphic, but we wanted to show kind of where we're using the different uh, SMW extensions as well as external data. External data is what we're using to pull in the data ex from externally hosted sites. Okay, so here's some of our major milestones. Um, the first step is in, within uh, the NATO data cards project, we had to um, migrate from you know, the original uh, combatant command area of responsibility organization structure to the more normalized seven continent organization structure. For some reason, they wanted to use just something that's more knowledgeable to DOD and not even like all Americans. So uh, things like Egypt isn't necessarily part of Africa, it's actually in a different combatant command and it was really confusing so we migrated all that data as well as made uh, a mapping between the different data elements between TIDAP and data cards. So we had to do, perform a data integration. And then we developed a run query and drill down search and created a subject taxonomy as well as a full ontology for the new enterprise data card solution and we developed some SOPs, and I'll give you some bullets and what our main SOP areas were. So here's just a couple of screenshots. This is the same uh, data set view, both in the TIDAP view and the new data cards view, so it displays a lot of the same data, but uh, not necessarily in the same format. But it is updated in real time as people update that information. Here's just a couple of screenshots of the run query interface and uh, the results and the drill down. People really like the drill down. They're really, because they don't necessarily know all the time what they're looking for, but this kind of gives you, you know, how many results are left. Here's a little, uh, kind of a little you know, table about how and why we went through with the subject taxonomy development. Uh, a lot of Specifically, DOD data is structured temporally, spatially, and, and uh, subject about its aboutness or its social impact. Uh, we also, we, we decided that we wanted to do three levels of de predefined subject taxonomy and then a fourth level of folksonomy developed by the user. 
this helps for um, you know things that we may not have covered or that may be a little bit too granular to add into a subject taxonomy. And this is just a screenshot of how we implemented that. And here's the three ontologies that we use. We use Dublin Core, FOF, and the DDMS. The DDMS is uh, the DoD Discovery Metadata Specification, which is basically the Dublin Core with uh, some added classification metadata elements in it. It's pretty much just the same. It's, uh, the Dublin Core is really, it's a lot nicer, it's a lot cleaner, the documentation is a lot better. Um, you can see just a little screenshot of you know, how that interacts and directly links to the Dublin Core element. We also use the semantic glossary extension uh, this allowed us, when we had our uh, subject taxonomy terms, we used that to say something that was a little bit more maybe arbitrary. Uh, it, you can mouse over it, uh, that term, when it's defined, and it pops up with this box here and uh, gives the description or definition. And here's just a couple of the main areas that we covered in our standard operating procedures. Uh, the data card working group that was facilitating the development of the subject taxonomy, uh, content management and maintenance, uh, who would be responsible for doing the further maintenance and uh, management of that. Ontology maintenance, as this progressed, we wanted to know how to you know, add and drop different terms, what our policies and procedures were gonna be for that as well as performing usability studies and functionality upgrades, you know, as the SMW features progress and new features come out, we may want to upgrade and change things. You know, how are we gonna go about doing that? So we had to outline that. Uh, content synchronization between different sites, as well as adding in new sites, dropping old sites that may be phased out, and migrating from the Nippernet, which is just into the Cipernet, which is a secret uh, area. Uh, different franchising options. Um, ideally, there would be no franchising since it's on the web, but uh, that was something that we were instructed to add in there. So, what do you mean um, by franchising? Pardon? What do you mean by franchising? Franchising, like, um, we have this hosted on a, currently on an unclassified, unclassified development network, but it would be hosted behind the DOD PKI, so you have to have a PKI, DOD assigned PKI card to uh, access this site. But um, if an agreement was come to and we say handed this, bundled it and handed it off to Great Britain, then that would be franchising. So how would we synchronize and what our policies would be for handing off a franchise version of this? This applies to like governments. Does this apply to public in any sense? Um, it could. It could, like, like I said, we're just in the prototyping phase of all this, but um, it could. It's definitely possible. And then uh, our final category was just integrating new sources. What was our, what were going to be our policies and procedures for integrating new sites? That's it. Any questions? DOD has its own semantic ontology. I didn't know that they were in the business of doing that. Has, has this, has any of this wiki stuff fed back into that? Like, you know, uh, uh, are you involved at all in, in, in making suggestions or changes or additions? I have made a couple suggestions. Uh, like I mentioned, the, the DDMS documentation is not all that great. <laughs> so I've kind of made some suggestions back to them to go forward with this and I've tried to kind of nudge my way into the working group over there because it's not it's not as structured the way that it should be but uh, they try and they try and keep it as much like the Dublin core as possible but when they're adding new elements like the classification pieces it's just not structured correctly. Um, there's a gentleman here from IEEE who is looking for ways to standardize these things. Are you guys in contact with IEEE? Uh, no. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, I work with another uh, government group called ABL, the Advanced Distributed Learning Initiative. Pardon? The Advanced Distributed Learning Initiative, or okay. ABL. Okay. Just a 
Yes. I don't know. I mean, I read this on the press a while back. Intellipedia is that still around and is using a It is. It is around. It's not semantically enabled. Um, it is also. It's a DIA initiative, not a DOD initiative. It's, meant to, it's mostly focused around the intelligence commuter community. Um, they have a team of, I think, twenty-five or thirty people. Um, it's it's really good. All the doing information. what you do, huh? Manually. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, doing what I do manually. Yeah, it's uh, they pretty much just chug away and uh, perform a lot of maintenance. It, the tool is really nice, but it's it's not data. It's so, it's not as data driven, not as collaborative, I guess. Really, it's just more for text sharing. Okay. Okay.